Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our question and answer session. I have a few more questions to go through and I also have some from Instagram that I'm gonna pull up for you guys in a minute. So the next question is from Mexanka221. Hey, sorry if I said your name wrong. <laughs> um, it says, what is the number one item that I would say is the most important piece that I've learned this year? Probably that no matter what, no matter how bad I feel like I'm doing, no matter how many times I start gaining weight again, or no matter how many times I did slip back into cheese in the last year, I've learned that no matter what happens, I will never give up, ever. It's a lifelong journey and it's about the lifestyle and about the journey it's not really about the destination yes I do want to reach a certain goal but even if I got to that goal I would still have to keep working at it every single day to keep it because nothing lasts forever so the most important thing I've learned about myself and throughout this journey is that I will never give up and I will keep on keeping on no matter what happens and someday I will break through everything and I will reach my goal and then I will maintain my goal <laughs> So let's see, the next one is from Karen Cruz. Sorry again about names. If I pronounce anyone's name wrong, I'm sorry. Karen asks, um, do you, your hubby, or your kids ever miss having meat and dairy products? Um, obviously, yeah, I miss, I don't really miss dairy anymore, but I, yeah, big problems with dairy in the past. Um, my husband still eats meat on occasion He's been doing really good lately. Uh, oh, and my sister-in-law just told me that she's two weeks meat-free yesterday. So I know that I am influencing some people, so that's pretty exciting. And um, yeah, so I don't know how long my husband's gone without meat. I should ask him, but uh, as far as I know, he's doing very well. <laughs> So that's good. All I can ask is that he tries, right? Um, Jenna Lee, she asks, what are my feelings about the gray area vegan things like sugar and palm oil? I don't really know anything about the whole sugar thing. I guess something about the ashes that it goes through. I really don't know anything about why sugar would not be vegan. Sorry, I guess I'll do some research on that. Um, Palm oil, I try to avoid it wherever possible. If I um, if I buy something and then I notice that it has it in there and I forgot to check, then I will still use it. Um, I don't approve of you know people tearing down the rainforest for any reason. <clears throat> so yeah, I need to be better at checking for that to make sure that I'm not using products with that in it. Um, <clears throat> I know that it isn't a lot of things and it, it can be kind of hard to avoid but um, I think if you can avoid it then do your best to avoid it and I will keep on you know I'm still pretty new with this on making sure I always check labels sometimes I mess up and I forget to check labels on stuff <clears throat> that has happened to me I'm sorry I have like throat thing today <clears throat> that's happened to me at least a few times in the last I know once for sure where I bought something from Trader Joe's and it ended up having egg in it because I forgot, to, it said meat free and I forgot to check. And actually, actually I do remember another time that it happened to me when I bought some veggie patties from Costco, I forgot to check that they were vegan and they had egg in them. So it's happened to me a couple times where I see meat free or something and I forget to check the label. So same thing with the palm oil, it's just gonna take some more time and effort on this lifestyle to remember to always always check the label because also <clears throat> the brands the people who make the stuff they could always change the ingredients and you wouldn't even know so every time you go it's a good idea to check the label so that's just you know something I have to remember the next question is from the girl in yoga pants um, she asks what was the hardest thing about the raw food challenge that I did I've done the raw food challenge a few different times and I've done the no processed food challenge. The no processed food challenge was the easiest one that I did and I lasted 25 days on that one. 
that was just raw foods all day and then I could have basically kind of like raw till four except I still ate beans which most people that I know of that do raw till four they don't eat beans or I don't know I still added in beans and anything that I mean rice and stuff is still processed but anything that was like basically a whole based plant food like potatoes sweet potatoes lentils rice beans um, canned tomatoes if it was like a canned vegetable or green I would just rinse it to get the excess salt off and I would still use that and I did really well on that challenge but when I'm on a raw food challenge I think it's when I come to detoxing and all the toxins and all the toxins come up and they make me start craving and I have a really hard time ignoring when I'm having a craving and I also have a hard time eating enough to stay full and when I do I get I just get hungry again like not long afterwards so I don't know it's really hard for, it's really hard. kind of hard sometimes to make sure you get enough calories and you're eating enough fruit to get rid of the cravings and it's just challenge that's what it is a raw food challenge it's a challenge especially when you're not used to it when you're not you haven't been doing it for forever like I don't know it's just I don't know I don't feel satisfied on a raw food diet I feel more satisfied when I'm eating potatoes or oatmeal which I miss actually I'm gonna start eating oatmeal again <laughs> I bought the starch solution and I'm actually going to read that um, hopefully soon. I, I'm trying to read so many books right now that I just can't even like, I have way too much going on. I can't get anything done. And then I get really sick of bananas really fast and bananas are like the easiest, cheapest thing to buy and I get, yeah, I get sick of them really fast. I like having raw foods in my diet but I, I, I have a really hard time doing it exclusively. Sorry that was kind of a long answer. Next one, let's see. Next question is from Something Okay. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Of course, you know, money would not be an issue. I just want to live somewhere where the weather is nice and I could grow a garden and where I could go out walking every morning and the air would just smell beautiful and fresh and, you know, California, San Diego area, Hawaii, Portland maybe, Oregon area. I really don't think we're ever going to move out of Vegas because my husband loves it here and I don't know, it's home. I'm used to it now. I, I, it would be really hard to pick up and move, especially while my parents are still, you know, here and uh, I don't have any other family that I'm close to. I only have my parents and my, my brother. My one brother lives in California, um, but my other brother lives here and my parents live here, so it would be hard to leave. Um, even though it would be really nice to live somewhere with better weather. I don't know, most people seem to like this desert heat, but I really despise it. <laughs> in the winter, it's cold and you're in the house all the time. And in the summer, it's so hot, you're in the house all the time. So there's very small windows during the year where you actually get to go outside and enjoy nature. And I like going out. I like being at the beach. I like going hiking. I like going for walks. And I don't do that here because the weather is terrible. To me, I think it's terrible. So, um, yeah. The next question is from Plant-Based Cheapskate. Hey girl. What percentage of plant-based meals do Luis and the kids eat? Do you ever have to prepare meals that are not vegan? Uh, no. I do not make food that is not vegan. Uh, I have let my kids buy things when we go out to restaurants in the past that are vegetarian, um, but I will not make or let them bring into the house actually anything that's not vegan. So my husband knows that if, well, I've never actually strictly told him not to, but he knows I don't want it in here. So. If he wants something, he'll go buy something and eat it when I'm not home or I've never seen, I've never seen like fast food chicken carcass in my trash or anything like that. Like he's totally kept it. He, he says this is my house, my kitchen. Yeah, he doesn't do that to me. He makes, he doesn't bring that stuff into the house. So 
Luis eats whatever I make and if he wants meat he'll eat it at work and or buy fast food when I am not around and I don't know anything about it because he doesn't tell me so I really don't know how much meat he's still eating for sure but he is trying really hard to be vegan and to eat plant-based so he's been doing really well and I don't know what the percentage is but he is doing very good and uh, the kids do eat out at restaurants and try to make sure I try to minimize it to at least a vegetarian if I'm with them I try to make them get macaroni and cheese or something I don't like it but they won't eat anything else I don't know what to get them to eat I never know what to get them when we go out because the only thing they ever want is macaroni and cheese or I don't know chicken tenders or waffles or pancakes or something that always has dairy in it there's always eggs or something in stuff when we go out to eat that I don't want them to eat but I don't know it's just a struggle I feel like I shouldn't be forcing it on them like I'm trying to teach them why it's a good idea to be vegan and why it's healthy and and about the animals but I feel like the more that I keep trying to force it on them the more they're going to push it away so I'm trying to figure out how to balance with my kids because I it's really hard because they don't understand and I don't want to like be so mean and forcing it on them so much that they never want to do it when they're older so it's really hard but I do what I can I work on it I'm trying I'm trying to teach them but it's hard my niece asked me who my favorite niece is well hmm, I wonder Lily she asked me what's my favorite video on my own channel. That is my episode 134, the video I made about healing Crohn's disease on a raw food diet. I feel like it has the most information and just I was like the most articulate that day and I, it just came out like it was meant to be. Like when I made it, it just came out really easily and I just felt like it's meant to be there. It, it was the best video I've ever done and I'm proud of it and I like I like that it's my second highest viewed video that I have and I still try to promote it and give it to people especially you know people who have IBS or colitis or Crohn's I try to put the information out there it's basically just to tell people like this is my story and then these are the resources that you should look into if you have these issues so I'm really proud of that video that's my favorite one and then <laughs> she asked me what my favorite number is well, 27, of course, because that's the day my birthday's on. So January 27th. <laughs> 27, my favorite number. Um, and she also asked me what made me make a YouTube channel. Who motivated me? Well, a lot of people motivated me. Um, I don't really know why I decided. Maybe because Freely and Durian Ryder are always saying, get out there, put your voice out there. What, you know, just promote, promote veganism. And uh, I was always watching, like back in the beginning when I was first looking into raw foods, I used to watch Annie, I used to look up videos of John Kohler, OK Raw, Megan Elizabeth, Fully Raw Christina, Annie P.O., I think that's how you say her name. Um, and those are the people I used to watch the most, like in the very beginning. And they were already at their goals they were already raw for who knows how many years when i started watching them and this was when you know garyan was still in my tummy so this is like five and a half years ago that i started looking at all the youtube videos and researching and buying books and um stuff like that for the raw food diet um, i just there wasn't a lot of people that you could actually follow their journey and i wanted to be able to show people that the struggle you know it's not easy I've been doing this already for five years and I'm not anywhere near my goal <laughs> it's not easy but I did cure mostly heal my Crohn's disease even though I haven't got to my goal weight I have greatly improved my intestinal health and my quality of life is oh my god like so much better than it used to be I I used to be miserable I used to want to kill myself so this lifestyle has pretty much saved my life so yeah those people inspired me to start a YouTube channel 
and to show people that it's okay if you struggle and it's okay if you don't do it overnight and it's okay to have transition period and basically do it your own way follow your own path and don't always listen to what everybody else tells you it's your life it's your path you should be doing it the way that you want to do it and it's nice to listen to other people's advice but sometimes you have to just listen to yourself and don't always follow all the YouTube gurus who tell you what to do because you're the one that knows what's best for you and that's why my informational video basically says this is my story and here is all the information you decide you go out and read the books you go out and, and research here is where you start because everybody needs to do it for themselves you can't just listen to one person's story and go okay I'm gonna follow exactly what they're eating and exactly what they're doing because that's not necessarily gonna work for you do it I mean you can start there but then you need to eliminate what doesn't work for you and find out what else does work for you and try different things that maybe they're not trying so sorry I just went on a rant but that's those are the people that motivated me in the beginning All right, so that's all the questions that I have from um, YouTube. Now I'm gonna go to my Instagram. I think I just had a couple, very few questions on my Instagram. Okay, so from Instagram, my first question is from Clea Waters. Um, who are your vegan idols, role models, activists whose approach you fully back? Um, Gary Yurofsky, of course, he's pretty amazing. And I think he's super brave for getting himself banned from other countries and actually going to places to liberate animals. Like, I don't have the balls for that, honestly. He's got big balls and I would not do any of that because I don't want to go to jail and I never want to be arrested and I never want to have a pair of handcuffs on me for anything so no um I, I, I'm not into that <laughs> I'm not brave enough to be like that so I really admire people who are brave enough to be like that uh so he's probably the only one that I really know of that it was an activist is an activist that actually does things so I really admire him I have lots of role models the whole community that I follow here on YouTube are my role models like I look up to all my friends that are trying their hardest every day posting videos and even if they don't have a big following it doesn't matter because they're putting their journey out there just like I am and they're sharing themselves and we share things together and those are my role models are my friends that and you know who you are so I don't really need to say a laundry list you guys know who you are who I talk to pretty much on a daily basis so love you guys thank you for your inspiring videos oh this is from uh, the vegan peach hey uh, Ashley she says what are your favorite vegan websites um uh, hmm, besides like where I buy my junk food <laughs> like the natural candy store.com is where I buy a bunch of vegan candy which is bad and I used to buy from rabbit food grocery which now has a store somewhere, I think in New York maybe, I'm not sure, I'm not for sure, for sure, but I know they just opened their first store somewhere and that's pretty, oh wait, I think it's in Texas actually. That's pretty amazing and congratulations to them. If they happen to see this, they're pretty awesome. Um, I know that adapt.org has a ton of information, that's Gary Yarovsky's website. Um, I've only looked at it a couple times because I don't, after watching, I've seen enough animal cruelty videos that I don't want to watch those if I can avoid it so um, I try not to go on there I don't want to see those videos the Holocaust animal killing videos is I'm over that I don't want to see it anymore so I don't really go to any vegan websites that I can think of so just people's YouTubes and okay hey banana wisdom Janine she's asking me is Vegas your permanent home or do you have plans to relocate we already answered that one sorry so I hope it's not my permanent home but it probably will be only one love hey girl she asked me uh, what do you use to um, finish and edit my videos how do I fit it in daily uh, editing and doing videos um, I use YouTube Capture, which is an app, and 
Um, I just use my phone, my iPhone. I videotape everything on my iPhone. I edit everything on my iPhone and I upload everything from my iPhone. So the reason it's not totally technical, like tech savvy, like some people's videos is because I do everything from my phone, but it works and I like it. It's super easy. And uh, I fit it in daily because it's something I love to do and I find it fun and it's entertaining and I just make time for it because it's something that I love. You know, everybody makes time for the things that they're really super interested in. So if you really enjoy it, you'll find time, you'll make time to do it. Just like people who go to the gym, they love it. So they make time for it. I'm a lazy ass and I never go to the gym and I need to, but obviously it's not a priority right now, even though it needs to be. <laughs> and hoping that I'm gonna make it be pretty soon. But anyway, there's your <laughs> answer. And... Hi, Raw Heather. Hey, Heather. She's asking me, what are my favorite plant-based books? Well, Heather, you know I never finish anything. <laughs> I am still halfway through the China study, but I have seen documentaries about it, and it that one is really interesting, all that information from that book, um, even though I haven't finished reading the technical book, Breaking the Food Seduction. Yeah, that was a good book. That one, I actually read the whole thing and finished it. That was good. And I did read Eat to Live by Joel Furman. That's a good book, too. I am currently, well, I ordered the Forks Over Knives cookbook. I know that that comes with information in it, but it's basically just a cookbook. So I don't know. We'll see how that one is. And I currently bought the Robert Cheek um, Shredded, you know, book about plant-based um, body lifting and everything. I buy the books. The problem is I don't have a lot of time to read them. So I have so many books on my book list and I don't have time to get to them all. And I end up reading a few pages here and then it's another two months before I read another few pages and it's hectic. I really love to read, but I have such a hard time fitting it in. Like basically I've been listening to audiobook on the way to work on the way home, but it's I'm listening to my fantasy book on the way to work and on the way home. And I don't have the um, I'm not paying for the subscription for my audiobooks anymore, so I can't download any new ones. So I just have what I have on there. So I've been re-listening to uh, a Robert Jordan book, the last book in the Wheel of Time series, and I don't have time. I mean, I don't have the uh, thing to download any new books right now, so I can't download um, like the Four Agreements, which I wanted to download to listen on the way to work, but. Maybe in the future I'll renew my subscription and I tried to actually but I have to call them because they couldn't process my card for some dumb reason and I didn't want to I didn't feel like dealing with it <laughs> so I never called them and I was just like forget it but someday I'll probably renew it so that I can do audiobooks again and then she also asked me what are my favorite kitchen gadgets and appliances that make this life um, style easier which is my Yonanas and my Vitamix and now my dehydrator which is awesome and I actually need to get back to using it more because I used it a lot the first couple days I got it and then I haven't used it for like a week or two now and those are pretty awesome machines if you don't have them save up because they're worth it and they are an investment in your health and they're totally worth it so Yonanas is cheap and Yonanas is only like 50 bucks so Get that one first <laughs> and then go from there and save up for or wait till tax return time and go crazy like I did this last year and get my dehydrator. That's what I used some of my taxes for was my dehydrator. So anyway, that's the end of the questions and this video is really long. I'm sorry it's so long and I will try to edit out some of the random stuff. Thanks for joining me, you guys, and I really love you guys. Thanks for following me and being a part of my life. You definitely make it a better, brighter, shiny life. Thanks so much. Bye.